So a fact that we've taken for granted but haven't proven yet is that if we take the inverse Fourier transform of the Fourier transform of some function f of x, then we should just get back f of x. I mean, if, if, if we do something to f and then we do the inverse of that on f, we, we should get f back. Um, but we haven't proven this yet. And so what I want to do in this video is actually work through the math and show that this is in fact true. Uh, so let's get started. Uh, the first thing to do is to uh, rewrite this whole thing uh, using using our, our, de our integral definition for the Fourier transform. And so uh, if we do that, what are we going to get? And, and here I'm using, uh, I'm using, a, I'm using the, the convention that I've been using so far, which is to have um, that constant 1 over 2 pi out in front and not have it in the exponential. So what do we have? We have 1 over 2 pi integral minus infinity to infinity. This is, this is for f inverse. Uh, we have e to the i k x. Okay. Uh, and then we have this this normal Fourier transform right here. We have integral minus infinity to infinity e to the minus i k x times, and I'll call this x prime, f of x prime dx prime, and then close this up with a uh, with a dk. So th this is this is the whole left hand side here written in terms of written in terms of our integral definition for the Fourier transform. Okay, uh, that's all that's all good. But what I want to do, and, and really the secret to getting this right is to to rearrange terms in the right way. And so one thing that we can do, you may notice, is that we can move this exponential here inside this integral because it, it's basically a constant. There's no x prime here, so this integral doesn't care about what's happening here. And so we can do that, and what we get is the same thing, uh, two integrals, and then we have an e to the i k x minus x prime f of x prime dx prime dk. Okay, that's all good. Um, but now what I'm going to do and this is this is the secret. We're gonna we're going to interchange the two integrals. And so instead of doing the x prime integral first, we're gonna do the k integral first. And when we do that, uh, no surprises here. We're just saying x minus x prime. And actually, now that we've uh, now that we're doing the k integral first, we can actually pull out this f of x prime, and I'll pull it out over here. So we have first our k integral over this exponential right here, and then we have this x prime integral. And uh, hopefully, hopefully you've seen my video on the uh, on the delta function, my, my series on the delta function, and how you can represent it in terms of the Fourier transform. Uh, if not, uh, I'll, I'll link that below. But uh, if you've seen that, then this this right here integral should be very familiar because uh, we show we show in that series that delta of x is equal to 1 over 2 pi uh, integral minus infinity to infinity e to the i k x. And so that means that this, this function right here is really just delta of x minus x prime. And we can substitute that in. Uh, and, and, and what's going to happen? So, so we lose this constant out in front, and we have just integral minus infinity to infinity f of x prime delta of x minus x prime dx prime. All right, and then now, if you're comfortable with delta function integrals, then well, yeah, this is this is an easy one. Uh, we integrate over x prime. That means we're going to set x prime equal to x everywhere. So this whole thing turns out to be equal to f of x. And so we've done it. We we started with our integral definition for the Fourier transform and inverse Fourier transform. A uh, couple lines of math rearranging things. And then once we once we know this property right here, uh, which which again I'll link in the description, uh, it's it's super straightforward to apply that, and then we get we get our f of x back out.